Hello everyone, this is the third part of the lecture on sustainability in metal additive manufacturing. We have discussed about the circle economy and product life cycle in the previous lectures. We will try to have an elaborative details of product life cycle in this lecture. So, to understand product life cycle, it has four different stages product and process design, material input and processes, make to order and closing the loop. So, it is generally a cradle to grave approach. This product life cycle is not to be confused when the product life cycle that we are talking about in the sustainability or life cycle assessment viewpoint. This is a marketing product life cycle in which the product is introduced to the market, then the growth of the sales go, then maturity happens and the decline go and the profit is in such a way. I have only put this graph because this confuses the people. So, this is not I would say cross not the PLM life cycle. PLM is product life cycle management or when we try to, try to say life cycle impact analysis. This is not that life cycle. So, this is only the use sales or not even the use way the sales of the product. This is the life cycle that we are trying to talk about product design, process design is the first step. Then we have production, material processing, raw material extraction also comes as one because it is cattle to grave from the birth of the child to the final disposal of the body of the child. So, raw material extraction is always there, material processing, component product manufacturing that is the part in the production. Then we have the consumers or prosumers which use and service the product, then end of life and it is a closed loop always repair and reuse through manufacture through the consumer itself or the remanufacturing or refurbishment through the manufacturer or sometimes the recycling that is the upscale recycle or down cycle the systems from the material processing itself. So, in the production phase of this cycle if I take an example of the additive manufacturing suppose if I try to make this as larger right a bigger circle the first step is atomization. right automation transports the material to the metal additive manufacturing technology or the system i would put technology here so it transfers the material so i will just put a dotted line here so this technology produces the component i would say the part is produced here which is taken from this technology now, what does the sustainable system or the life cycle impact analysis suggest us that recycling, repair, reuse has to happen that is from the manufacturing technology is as it went to the remanufacture, recycle here and down cycle was here, here is a down cycle we have. This could go uh, from the technology to the powder recycling as well, I would put powder recycling, this powder recycling could take inputs from the additive manufacturing technology only and this can further help to provide input to the automation process once again. These are our inputs. I will make sure that the arrow has the right pointing head. From here, the metal additive manufacturing also could reuse, recycle the design or tools both. Design and tools both, and this can go again. as an input to the other industrial uses. I will put
if the design is optimized for one process, the simulate des optimized design could be used as an input to the other process. So, these other processes take inputs from the reuse and redesign. This can also take input from the powder recycling. The recycled powder could also be used in the other processes and the recycled powder could also give input to the current technology, maybe the powder fusion process, what we are using. But this is the production process that I will put an example in the metal additive manufacturing, how does it help to get the technology from here. So, when we try to see the product life cycle and we try to see the different stages of product life cycle, to divide it into three major stages. In the design stage, the material and energy savings in the production of high value products is the major contributor in having the sustainable products. Improved product fun functionality and efficiency in use is instituted during the design phase itself. Lower energy intensity and waste avoidance in the process is taken care of. During a design phase itself, there are certain challenges like educating the manufacturers about the potential uses and benefits of additive manufacturing. Then we need to implement the distributed maintenance system and certification of new components then capturing and replicating learning in future applications, then limited and uncertain performance due to low maturity of technology for large scale structures, requirement of standards and regulations. So, in the design stage, we do not have the specific lead design standards as they are in subtractive manufacturing, the ISO standards are still missing major of the clauses which are very important to design the additive manufacturing component in a legitimate manner in a great manner. So, when I talk about the design stage, the next stage obviously is the production stage. You can see this graph in the cradle to grave. It starts from the product design. So, though it is a running system only, but this becomes step one, then raw material extraction, then material processing, then manufacturing, then assembly, then sales. So, this is from cradle to gate. It has given six processes. From the gate, it goes to the user and users uses and maintain. So, this becomes my seventh step, then end of life is the eighth step. So, when I put the my material, there are certain, again I would put the sustainable impact analysis. I would say, I will just put impact analysis, I am not putting life, ok, I will put life cycle impact analysis only. To have this, the three dimensions are material, energy and pollution. All these three stages are studied for during use, before use and after use of the material. Before use, I would say B U as before use during use, after use. Before use means the material, how is it extracted? During use means when you are producing it, how is it being produced? After use means once you have used it, after use, how is it is? It is affecting the environment, whether the material is wasted or not. Then energy during use, before use and after use. Before use, during use, after use. Before use the energy, how is the material got, what is the machine manufactured of, what is an embodied energy in the machine, embodied energy I will put it as a term. To manufacture each component, we there is an energy that is consumed that is known as the embodied energy of that product or part or component. Similarly, for pollution we have three nodes again. In these three nodes, it could be impact, impact could be positive, negative or zero. Whether the impact is positive, for example, in this, if I put after use impact of energy, is it giving energy, is it zero, is it positive or is it negative. So, this is one of the ways when you try to see the before, during and after use. So, this is the use phase. So, this is the before use phase. This is during use phase, all this is the before use phase from cradle to gate, 
and end of life is after use phase. That is, how do we dispose it off? What is the energy that is being consumed? So if suppose coal is to be disposed of, sometimes it is reused, the energy becomes positive here. So material input processing in a production stage, product process reactants are not non-toxic and can be recycled locally. This is one of the important factors. Localized material recycling is to be taken care of. Input recycled materials are from larger scale recycling systems and potentially more efficient than local recycling systems. Diversion of a byproduct from waste stream is to be taken care of. So material input processing, material and process standardization, process scale up for newer materials, possibility of material contamination, limited material options, limited recyclability of product at its end of life due to mixed materials. When I talk about material input processing, again the data given by the same paper or the same publications by Liu et al. They say for the different material like TI6, AL, 4V and an aluminum alloy AL SI10, MG, then there is a turbine blade alloy, this tel 625 and tool steel. They have given the energy consumption at the gas automation stage only, at gas automation stage, the energy consumption. So it is given that the energy consumption for titanium is around 7 to 31.7 of mega joules of energy per kg of the metal powder production. So it depends upon the process parameters here, 7 to 31 kg it is given a range. Then for the aluminum alloy it has given 8.1 mega joules per kg, for this turbine blades alloy it has given 55.6 and for the tool steel it has given 1.0. So this energy becomes our energy input here before use, before use energy material input in energy here, the second part here, I will put 1, 2, 3. In the second part energy before use that is even when it is not used to produce the powder only. So this is having the maximum energy, this alloy, right. This is an input to the impact analysis. So in the material input processing, another data set that is provided in the same publication, they have given the embodied energy in metal powder materials. For example, the materials that they have given are copper, aluminum, steel, and zinc along with nickel. So it is given that energy that is embodied energy in mega joules per kg. This energy is maximum for aluminum which is in the range of 160 to 230 mega joules per kg. It depends upon the material, how the material is extracted, how the material is uh, then processed, extraction of the ore, the ore extraction process, then the treatment of the ore, all these processes contribute and the minimum energy that is given for is copper, 33.0 to 64.5 mega joules per kg. In between the zinc is there. 35.8 to 48.4 mega joules per kg. We have steel that varies from 78 to 97 of the units and the nickel varying from 113.5 to 193.8 mega joules per kg. So this is the important energy, this is the material input that is there. So this should come in the initial phase, even before the production when the when we get the material 
if we try to see the life cycle impact analysis, the energy of the material that is taken into account and embodied energy, how the materials in itself have their energy that becomes an input to the life cycle impact analysis. Now, in manufacturing, increased access to digital designs for spare parts is more important. More localized manufacturing, less high value waste generated, raised awareness of manufacturing process and its impacts, improved access to equipment, increased equipment utilization. Equipment utilization, the example that we quoted was the sintering. Right? More localized production, so that minimum transportation. Now, in manufacturing, if we try to compare the different steps in manufacturing, for example, the four steps. Uh, how do they draw and time share in the fabrication stages? So, let me say the first step is preheating. The same researchers gave the comparison or the study of the power consumed and the time share it has taken in the power. Then, laser scanning. then powder spreading, and cooling down, cooling down, and cleaning. So, it is given that the power in kilowatt hour for the cooling down system is minimum that is 0 0.7 kilowatts. Then we have the preheating system that is 2.25 kilowatts. Then we have the laser scanning that is 3.25 and then is the 3.45 that is for the powder spreading. Right? The time share for the uh, stages that how long these stages took the time. So, laser scanning took the maximum time that is 68 percent of the time. I will put it time share. Preheating took 12 percent, powder spreading took 5 percent, and cooling down took 15 percent of the time. But this is in material additive manufacturing, how the things change. Putting a specific case here, we have uh, taken the data and tried to see that. How do we put the indicators or different parameters while calculating the uh, impact analysis? There are certain models that, that could give us the impact analysis like we have given life cycle impact analysis equivalent to the life cycle costing plus life cycle analysis plus sustainable life cycle analysis. It is further divided into certain equations. So, it could also be seen if you wish to study, we will provide those in the references. Next. There are certain challenges in the production stage that is limited availability of digital designs are there. The cost of acquiring new designs is always a challenge. Limited functionality and utility, reliability and quality of 3D printing processes. This also encourages the materialistic society and consumerism. Because the more and more we could produce and more and more new and new designs come, the consumers keep on trying to get new and new designs. People would like to have their customized mobile cover. People would like to have their specifically designed components or the key rings for them, for example. Then services are currently fragmented and unevenly distributed. Majority of the services are lower end consumer 3D printers only. In the end of the life strategies, small and simple equipment, quick and easy to use as mobile or small scale recycling stations. Recycling stations are always suggested in situ recycling of the common waste, for example, the powder, the support material, if that could be recycled once again. Everyday products and packaging, everyday means the routine products in the metal ready manufacturing, improved product utilization, reduced material consumption, design for longevity, automated processes, all process steps integrated into one, remanufacturing and repair of high value components at low cost. 
there are certain challenges like limits on recyclability of material due to quality loss, educating consumers about recycling of 3D printing materials. About recycling of the 3D printing materials, I would like to put the data on the same table uh, where the material is were there and the embodied energy is there. So, this is before use. Let us put something that is after use. So, this is before use I would say and after use that is the energy consumption for recycling. Recycling energy. This is also given in the energy per unit weight, but the units here are kilowatt hour of energy per ton. So, for the copper the energy that is given is 1560 kilowatt hours per ton. For the steel it is only 722, because steel is easy to recycle, it gets rust easily. So, it is easy to convert into a new shape. Then for aluminum it is given as 736. One data point is also given for titanium. For titanium as we all know the melting point is quite high. So, the energy for recycling of titanium, the machining, the production of titanium powders, it is very high. The energy for recycling here is 39,000 units. So, this is how the things differentiate. Titanium has its own application in medical devices, in aerospace and because of the high strength to weight ratio, it is used for the critical components and it is having the bio friendly nature as well. So, it is a biomaterial, it can be used for the implants in the body, but see how heavy the energy consumption is there. So, this is what is being mentioned here about the recycling of the 3D printing material, what is the energy consumption. Then replication of business model to other sectors is also important. Limited integration of additive manufacturing with other techniques in design and production and required mindset shift for designers and engineer. With this my lecture series on sustainability in metal additive manufacturing finishes. The major things that we have discussed and that you should ponder the points on are how do we measure the sustainable impact evaluation, try to see explain the sustainable design approach, differentiate between the lean and green business models, what is the synergy between both of them, how do they go hand in hand, what is environmental value streaming, how is design quality retained in sustainable manufacturing, elaborate sustainable design methodology for additive manufacturing, the design guidelines and rules try to look at them once and list them write down the characteristics of sustainability in metal additive manufacturing, one example that is quoted that could also be say, taken. So, you can take your own time and try to understand the life cycle impact analysis. This was a brief introduction to sustainability, green manufacturing in which the concepts of lean manufacturing, green manufacturing, circular economy, life cycle assessment, life cycle impact analysis were studied. In this the major concepts of the uh, life cycle impact analysis that design for green manufacturing, then the various steps in the life cycle assessment, then consumer economy all these concepts were studied. So, let us meet in the next week, we will have further discussion on the metal additive manufacturing. Thank you.